Here we go again. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Libercast, the 39th episode of the Libercast. And I want to begin and thanks everyone for tuning in and partaking in the project and um, all the guests that I have. So grateful to have you all, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to bring up some things there. Um, I want to acknowledge um, Carolyn Riley Shadow Work Community. It's, uh, her website is a course on shadow working. And I suggest everyone to go take a look. If you're, you have curiosity for it, if you are initiated on it and or if you are an experienced shadow worker there's stuff for everyone there it's brilliant she, uh caroline riley does a, a great job in this course so thank you caroline again here we go um i'm having um david greenberg welcome brother again for a second episode Thank you for being there. Can you hear me? Thank you, Fred. It's great to be okay. here again. Okay, I, I, I was I have doubt that you you heard me. Um, so um, there's uh, there's something I wanted to bring um, because about this because I think there's um, this pattern of um these these um cults that are um preaching for magical thinking and the false um laws of attraction and all these things that there we're it, the, this information is very um it's very good for the people who are desperate for a change and what I mean by that is when you come from another cult, let's take the example of, of uh, Christianity, you, came, you, you, you come out of that and then you're, and you're, do all, uh, you're going to another religion that will bring you more beliefs, more illusions, and this salvationist approach to uh to reality and determinism so i wanted to bring uh these these uh, few words before we're starting so um uh david um please uh, tell us about your work and where we can get it absolutely fred and first of all i just wanted to thank you again for having me on a second time it's just a pleasure to be back on um People can find my work at freedom by art, freedom dot art. That's the go. website. And uh, I share go. content that I create as well as content from other creators, including this podcast and others. Um, it's a great place to learn what, what the heck is really going on in the world, especially for people who are like us, who, who want to have a true awakening, who want to really live in a truly free world and uh and basically upgrade the reality significantly and uh take advantage of this beautiful gift that we have of free will so freedomvibe.art is the website here you go you have a facebook page you too yeah i mean people can find me um from the website Site, I have links to different media, but basically I'm on, uh, if you search freedomvibe.art on just about any platform, you'll find a YouTube channel. You can either search it under my name and with, with freedom, but the easiest way to find it. Um, we're all, I, we should also be restreaming this to that channel. And um, I, you can find me as David Greenberg Anarchists. That's my uh, handle there. And I also have a page, freedomvibe.art, the same name. And I cross post on a couple of platforms like Odyssey, Float, 3Speak, Twitter, Instagram, 
So I try to I try to post as as many places as it makes sense. Okay, so, Fritz, um, there's a little lag, so I'm going to try to downstep my uh, yes a bit. So um, all right, I think it's going to be a good show tonight, and uh, I think it's it it's worth very uh very much to um to have a look a deeper look into this phenomena and um and for the people who are new to this concept here it's you're you're up for a treat so um please um you can, can you explain to us what is the difference between um magical thinking and um the the true reality the the true when you're we're taking the action versus taking a, a a meditation or a prayer or a magical thinking what's the difference between between them yep and that's what i'm going to get into in my presentation i'm not sure if you want to let me if you yep. want me to let the cat out of the bag early or not um yeah sure but let me Okay, perfect. So I tried to come a little more organized this time. I want to thank Fred for encouraging me to create an actual presentation. Let me see how I move forward in that. Okay. So just a brief thank you again. Uh, I also wanted to mention just real briefly, this is kind of an aside, um, but someone who from my audience actually made a donation to me today, to my work. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate that. It's very special. It doesn't happen very often. Uh, I'm not going to name this person because I don't think they wanted to be named, but they know obviously know who they are. And, and, and uh, I really appreciate it. In fact, they told me they were going to donate a few weeks before they were just, they were prepping me and they followed through. They, they stayed true to their words. So I, I really appreciate that. That does make a big difference. And I want to encourage people who are watching this. Look, I know that people are not, not everybody who's watching this is broke and on the street. People do have some, a little bit of income. So if this is, if this work is important to you, make donations, not, not just to me, but to anyone who's doing this work, you know, contribute almost like you were paying for something that you deem valuable, right? Because it could, because yes, we can obviously live in a world without money. That's a whole separate conversation that we can have at some point but you know as long as we're living in a world where money is is a as a primary resource for getting things done then us having access to the resources is going to make a difference so i just wanted to say that special thank you because that can't that happened today i and i really do appreciate that um so the reason why i wanted the reason why i chose this particular topic to speak about is because I have a lot of firsthand experience with magical thinking. You know, I'm someone who engaged in magical thinking for a large part of my life. And, and as we get through this presentation, I'm going to share anecdotally some of the consequences of that, of thinking that way, just to give you guys the firsthand. And of course, synthesizing that with a general, using the trivium and just un, a general understanding of how this works in reality. Um, and I think that magical thinking is a, is a major obstacle that's in the way of, of, of the great work. You know, it's a, it's a major obstacle and it's something that we do need to pay attention to. And it's very, very ubiquitous. And our opponent, however you want to call them, the dark occultists, the uh, sorcerers of psychology, however you want to call them, uh, they know this and they peddle this thinking very intentionally. They sell it. And as we get into this presentation, I'll explain why I think they're very successful at selling it. Because understanding that is also going to be important for us to get out of this. And I think the good news is that the solutions are actually fairly simple. Doesn't mean that they're easy. Things, things that are a uh, value in life rarely are easy, but the solutions are very simple. I think that's actually the good news. That's the silver lining as it were that uh that really makes it worth it okay 
The other thing I wanted to say, a lot of people will start their presentations with a little bit of caveats. So I just want to throw in my version of that. Um, check in with your intentions. Like, why is, why, why are you here? Why is this important to you? You know, because the, the intentionality behind what you do, what you, the information you take, and then ultimately what you do with it is going to drive the result. I also want to encourage people to ask better questions. And this is something I actually did while I was preparing this presentation, because I realized as I was going through it, that if I could keep asking better questions, I would get more and more to the roots root causal factors, but also like the root level understanding and not just a surface level understanding. Right. So I think this is a, this is a discipline that can work well in any presentation. And I've, uh, you know, thankfully for having gone through this exercise, I learned that, that, so I want to encourage you as you watch this to ask better questions as well. Don't, don't just get stuck at the surface level where the ego tends to get stuck, but go deeper. Of course, you're 100% responsible for what you do with this information. And I'm probably wrong about at least one thing that I'm going to say here today. So, you know, don't believe anything I say. Do your own research and then figure out if I'm, what I'm saying is actually true or not. And now that, that graphic is from one of my recent videos. Uh, I think it was called On Being Offensive. So... So what, so just to answer the question now, what exactly is magical thinking? And, uh, it's, it's, I'm going to give an exact definition in a second, but if it's easier to think about it, perhaps if this is the first time you're hearing this term to think about it in its different manifestations and it, or, and or related concepts. So if we think about prayer or praying to a God in a religious context, like, please, God, do this for me, bring, you know, help my child, et cetera, all these prayers, that is a form of magical thinking. The law of attraction, as it's taught principally in the mainstream, not the true, what we can call the true laws of attraction, but the mainstream version is also a form of magical thinking, as we're going to see. Wishful thinking, of course. Uh, manifesting, which is almost the same, is similar to law of attraction in the uh, new age circles, but it's kind of this concept of manifesting. And then just daydreaming in general. These are all different flavors, as it were, of magical thinking. So in the end, magical thinking is really this kind of naive belief that you can you can affect reality, you can affect change and manifest in reality into physical reality just by thinking about what you want to manifest and then perhaps adding in some usually positive emotions to that to emotionalize it. So thinking about it, thinking about it over and over again, think about mantras, for example, or, or affirmations and then adding in some emotion. This is really what magical thinking is at its core. So some specific examples of magical thinking, and there are many, many, these are just a few to kind of prime people's thinking. Um, again, healing illness or injury through thought and feeling alone. Thought and feeling, again, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but these things are important, but that's not enough. Uh, here's one that I ran across a few times in, especially in the new age, uh, prayer or meditation to remove bad karma. This is, believe it or not, Fred and audience, this is actually a thing. There are videos out there and you can search for them where people are saying, all you have to do is listen to this or say this or, you know, something, some variation of that. And you can literally remove your bad karma. Beho beha uh, uh, Bohemian Grove, anyone? <laughs> and there they're trying to remove it before they even do anything, which is even more of a form of magical thinking. Um, here's a, here's a subtle one, but one that's played in my own life is when you, when people make very sudden or drastic changes to their eating habits, and then they only expect, they expect that, Oh, it's, it, you know, my body's just going to adapt magically to that, that there aren't going to be, you know, consequences. And this is something again, that I've lived personally. Removing toxic people, 
this is a big one in 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 cancel culture or whatever they call it now um in postmodern thinking if i just remove toxic people that's going to solve the problem i just need to ignore them slash remove them from my life of course manifesting money this again goes back to the whole law of attraction we'll talk more about that in a second uh praying for world peace i'm gonna pray for world peace that should be enough right God wants us to have world peace. So if I pray hard enough, then it should happen. <laughs> Here's one. The police will protect me. Magical thinking that if the police are there to protect me, and if I just think about the police as being that protecting force, then that's the way it is. Meditating for freedom. If we just get a bunch of people in the room to meditate, then that's enough to create freedom in the world. Actually, I have a, a little something that I can say about this. Here in Canada, we had a lot of um, um, gatherings of people. And um, some of them, I don't know where their reasoning is coming from, but they're starting to gather together and meditate in front of the institutional building for freedom it's i mean do we have to go to go to go like for an example you know just like that you know you're gonna meditate your the tyranny of your government away you know yeah. sit down and do nothing essentially this is what it means it's like yep. hope hopelessly meditating on on things that you cannot fucking change by doing nothing Here we amen go. amen brother and i'm gonna as we get into the comp into the presentation i'm gonna explain more why people think that why people fall for that thinking we'll get into it a little more but um ignore the negative this of course is a huge body of work because it's one of the major tenets of the new age religion and um but here think about it for example with the people know if people are not if we're not lying to ourselves we know that that the extent to which child sex trafficking uh pedophilia child ritualistic uh, child abuse and abuse in general we know that it's going on a lot more than than is visible and yet many people feel and believe that if they just ignore it, if they take their attention away from it, that somehow it's going to go, it's, it's not going to, it's, it's taking the power away from it. Right. Again, we could talk a lot about that because that, that is a whole, that is part of a, of a religious system, but it's also an example of magical thinking. Right. Ignoring people or circumstances that one doesn't agree with. Again, it's kind of similar, similar thing. If I just, ignore you you know you're toxic i don't agree with you i don't know oh, the one that the one i heard lately oh there's no nothing as bad experience of good experience Fuck. oh my this is a good example of it you know our irresponsible so yeah. to, I have interrupted you. No, it's 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 important. That's why I put the ellipsis at the bottom because I mean this list could be endless. Just, you know, these are just some examples that I came up with to kind of prime the pump, but you know, think about it in just in your own life. Be honest with yourself, think about it when you've engaged in it, but think of also about how many times you run into it, you know, in other people. That should give you an idea of just how prevalent it is. Right. Magical thinking, I think, is actually very closely related to solipsism. It's not the same as solipsism, but solipsism being that that belief, that that completely delusional belief that reality is just going on in your head. Like it's this is all in my head. Oh, it's there aren't actually there isn't actually anything outside of me. Well, if you if you truly think that way, if you even partially think that way, if you even entertain that to a degree, that opens up the door to magical thinking because if you're God, if you're everything there is, if it's all emanating from you, then of course all you have to do is think in order to manifest because you're it. So, I mean, it, it 
it is very closely related. And one could say that it's a slippery slope, like someone who engages in magical thinking is becoming more of a solipsist, perhaps. Um, and someone who's solipsistic is almost certainly going to be engaged in magical thinking. So there is a very close relationship between the two. So moving here. Uh, a lot of people are going to be familiar with this movie called The Secret. I, of course, watched it, as did many people, thinking it, at the time that it was a great movie. I, I really thought it was a great movie at the time. That just shows you where my mindset was at, at that time. You know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to be honest about that. Um, going back and reviewing it, not necessarily in entirety, but reviewing like clips from the movie outtakes, it's very clear that that is that that movie is very heavily promoting magical thinking. It's basically a treatise. It's basically a, a how to think magically kind of movie and very little else. It's spiritual enslavement. Yep. Yeah. It's like that last cul-de-sac and the timing is brilliant because it came out, you know, in 2006. Uh, I mean, the timing of it is not an, it's, it's not an accident, right? Nowadays, there's a plethora of gurus who teach magical thinking in one form or another, and each one of them does it in a different way. Some of them, I think, you know, I can't, I'm, I'm not going to be here. I don't know these people personally, so I'm not going to come on here and say whether they're uh, what we could call useful dupes who actually believe what they're teaching, what they're peddling, or they are intentionally deceiving people. I think some of them are, at least a few of them here are intentional deceivers that have been planted in our, in our culture, very to, you know, to, uh, sadly hint, hint in a very sad way, uh, confuse people and mix truth with lies. That's another thing they do. You know, the, these gurus, they'll mix in things that are true with the lie to get you to buy it because no one's going to buy the lie if it's naked. Right. So it's just to give you a sense of how prevalent it is in common culture. I would say just based on, on my own experience and talking to people, even in everyday life and just interacting with people and also seeing what's going on through the, through the internet, I would say that there's a real epidemic of people who believe that mad magical thinking is actually going to allow them to manifest people, events, circumstances in, into physical reality. Right. I think, you know, this is a, this is a known thing, a known quantity. So the question then becomes why we want to ask better questions. Why is magical thinking so ubiquitous? Why is it everywhere? How did it come to be this way? Well, one thing about magical thinking is it's very seductive. And a lot of things that entrap us, they are that way. They are very seductive, right? And if we aren't putting on our higher thinking caps, then we can fall into that trap very easily, right? And what we'll see is that actually magical thinking is the perfect mindset for people who are mentally lazy, who aren't willing to do the work internally, right? Why is that so? Well, think about it. If you can think magically and create things, you don't, there's no real responsibility. There's nothing that you have to give up. There's no sacrifice. There's nothing that you have to put on the line to make it happen. It's, it's easy. No, no responsibility, nothing. It appeals of course, to the ego's desire for instant gratification. And I can tell you again, from my personal experience that, uh, instant, you know, being a slave to instant gratification is one of the main ways that we are enslaved. So this is, a this kind of thinking appeals very much to someone who is in that vibe. It doesn't require any effort at all, except, you know, maybe to say some words out loud, minimal effort. So it's, it's great for people who are actually lazy. Again, it goes back to that avoiding negative thoughts and feelings, avoid the negative, avoid the negative. And it's especially alluring to young children in particular, those who have not, who are not being continuously taught this, these occult sciences so that they can, you know, they can format in their formative years, they can format their mind in a way that they're not going to be fooled that easily. Right. So they, they can, um, okay. So it's going to be a little bit of noise here for a second as someone's coming in the house. 
Bear with me for one second. Not a problem. A little bit of enthusiasm there. Okay. So um, what are the actual consequences of magical thinking? You know, what, what is the consequence? What is the outcome of, the, of, of thinking in this way? Well, I'm going to sh first share... Uh, Actually, these slides, okay, I wasn't expecting that slide to be in that order, but no import, not important. Many people suffer by harming themselves and others because they are thinking magically, right? So magical thinking actually leads to self-harm and it leads to harmful behaviors that can actually harm other people, right? So this is a real issue, right? Now, making it more personal, I was someone Fred, that I believed in magical thinking for most of my life. And this is why this creating this presentation was so powerful for me personally. This photo is from about, I want to say seven or eight years ago. So not even that long ago. Just look at my face. You can see the suffering. Even if you don't know anything else about what was going on in my life, you can see how much I was suffering, how much I was out of alignment. It just, it, it shows, right? I saw it immediately when I went back to the archives to find old photos. And I can tell you that at that time, I remember at that time, I was very much engaged in that kind of thinking. And uh, now we're going to find out what that, what that created for me. So this is, just, this is just the price that I paid personally. And this isn't even everything. This is just what I was able to, you know, just came to mind when I was thinking about this. So look at the price that I had to pay personally for suffering in terms of suffering just from thinking magically. Damage or lost friendships, many of them, and relationships, and I'm referring to both family but also other types of relationships, romantic, uh, familial, and so forth. Constant chronic lower back pain because I wasn't getting to the root causal factors. And it's just like constant and always you know, blaming external blame, health consequences in general. I was a heavy smoker for five years, thinking I could do that without any kind of heavy, you know, health consequences. Uh, let's talk about financial debt. There was a time when I had money and then no money. You know, had money and then I owed money. Like huge fluctuations, loss of a huge, you know, loss of resources that could have been put to very good use, and instead they were squandered. Completely. It's very sad. Damage to my teeth, extensive, extensive dental work, similar to what was going on with my health in general. 12 years of addiction to pharmaceutical drugs. 12 years. With, and everything that entails. Like, that doesn't even, you know, that could be a whole conversation in itself. Like, all the consequences and all the impact of being addicted to pharmaceuticals for 12 years. But just imagine that. Right? Oh, I just, if I just take this pill, it's going to solve all my problems. That's actually another form of magical thinking. I didn't even, didn't even connect that until now, but you know, thinking I can take a pill to solve my health problems is a form of magical thinking, right? We'll add that to the list. Loss of work and business opportunities. Um, and then of course the real price to humanity of what I was doing is I became uh, kind of like we have this term, the de facto Satanist. Well, I became a de facto supporter of the dark great work. I was inadvertently serving their agenda by buying into this belief system, this religion. And then of course, failure to step up and serve my true purpose, which of course, now I'm making my best attempts to, to do. As long as, I'm, as long as we're alive, it's never too late. But unfortunately, I lost a lot of time. And, I, and I'm saying that in particular to people who are younger, who still have a lot of their years ahead of you. This is, this is your great opportunity, right? This is your great opportunity to learn from my mistake. So that, that I just shared was just the price that I paid. We're not even talking about in general, right? So let's talk about personal consequences, because obviously we're going to bring this, we're going to open up to the context of, of humanity as a whole, because that is important, but let's just look at general. Like if you were to generalize what I just shared, people, this is what a lot of people are suffering from because of thinking of magical thinking. So they're more likely to have health problems that they just can't figure out. They can't solve them. They think 
if I just keep taking a pill, that's, that's the only thing I can do. Awkward, damaged, or difficult relationships with others across the board. Um, no progress or fulfillment in life. You know, feeling like you're on the hamster wheel. You're never making progress. You're kind of staying in the same place. Never really moving forward. Um, in some cases, not necessarily in all, but in some cases, the ego can become so calcified and so, so entrenched. And it starts to move into the realm of narcissism, like just thinking that really that thinking that you are God and that you've got everything that you, everything you want, you have coming to you, right. And just becoming more embittered as, as that doesn't happen. Uh, chronic or acute depression, because of course there's this misalignment between the truth and what you keep telling yourself. So that's going to have a toll on the psyche. It's, it's, it can't not have a toll on the psyche even if it's not, even if we can't say it in words, uh, and then financial and relationship struggles in general. So, and then the ellipsis, because this is again, just, uh, just what I was able to surmise. There may be more things that you, you guys may think of that you can just add to that list. I just want to add something be, uh, before you continue your, uh, I, I very, I like did very much by the way. I like I like your presentation. I like the visual and I like how clear the information is. Um, so I want to I want to thank you of that because there's a lot of visual people who needs to maybe sometime read. So uh, that's good for that. And I I just want to bring that um, there's these uh, things are not. Uh, all about the consequences of magical thinking there's things in there that can you can uh, find into shadow working because you have this you have to confront this discomfort of uh peeling these layers you were saying that earlier uh david before we go live that peeling these these uh these things that we we have this we struggled with for years and just to uh and put a positive on that that it doesn't mean that you have to continue to feel that you do you i just want to tell the people that if you have one or a few of them it, you don't have to endure that you can go over this and heal it by by a lot of different ways uh, your body your your soul your mind your emotions and most of these things will uh go away after a time you know when you you start to like really start to take care of yourself and i'm struggling with a lot of uh uh of things um i'm i'm way i'm not i'm not perfect at all I um the the shadow work is is very um very hard for me and I uh this is I wanted to bring that because there's a um there's a psychological um underlying there and this is self-loathing and um the the lack of self-respect and ignorance and things like that that are all cause of that not because you don't have the information the information is available everywhere I, you don't have to you, you don't have to stay in this state there you don't have to to keep enduring this i just wanted to bring that that's awesome fred i i really respect and appreciate you for sharing that and uh, it takes courage to to share openly you know, the struggles that we're going through. And that's, um, that's kind of one of the examples, your example, as well as many others from this community, those who are basically pioneering doing this work, I've really been taking the taking your example and their example to heart. And it is hard. I mean, it's it's hard to, to admit to yourself, you know, how much you fucked up. But it's also important to do that. And just the fact of being able to recognize that and say it is, is, is a liberation of energy and it starts to open the door. It's not the whole story because this is, as we'll see, this is a lifetime of healing and a lifetime trajectory. It's something that we 
you know, it's not a one and none. It's something we're going to be doing for the rest of our lives to some extent. Now, yes, we will reach new, new peaks and there will be triumphs and there will be setbacks. It, you know, it's not going to be just on the same level, but yes, it, it, it's it, we're, what we're signed up here is, is something that's, it's hard, you know, it's not easy. And it's some, that's why I think a lot of people try to escape from it. Unfortunately, it's exactly where the real gold is, where the real gold mine is. So uh, I just wanted to commend you, Fred, for for sharing that. And um, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of positive things. Yeah. To you know, uh, I just to make a, a little uh, uh, interlude. Um, I keep repeating it because it's important to um, bring examples of even if you're struggling, you know, in your life, even uh, in the shadow work, or in any. Uh, any context of your life when you get out of it when you when you heal it when you you fought with everything to go over this problem this um this trauma this this uh this trap that you were in you have to give yourself love and respect and to have gratitude for everything you have even if it's not much if you have your health if you have your mind if you have you can see the sun if you can go out and enjoy life and having a little everything is very important very important. you have some some people will some people will share their life with animals some will do some will make children like me <clears throat> or will or uh, a lot of uh, people um, who chose to share and give their life for for the betterment and for um, making this world better, not by changing the adults, but by inculcating and talking about this to children and learning them empathy and morality and the golden rule and all these beautiful things and this this is not only an individual struggle is it is it is a collective so uh social uh societal problem this is a cultural problem and if we don't talk about it if we don't share about it if we don't go to our loved one or relatives and we're not talking about these things it's it, well i can we can do it all the time by the internet i mean it costs me nothing you know to 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 reach all the, the these beautiful people that i have in um the comments and the beautiful guests um that i'm having because i i mean i could do something else with my time you know but i i, I decide to sacrifice for not only me not only me for my children but my neighbors and the people who are in other countries and if everybody did a little something it's not you don't have to do much just do the inner work and then do it not only for yourself do it for the empathy that you have do it for for humanity as a whole and this mindset that everybody called themselves uh, parasites. We have to let this shit go. This self-loathing. It's really a bane of humanity, as much as much as moral relativism or solipsism. We have to let this 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 um, we have to let it go. Essentially, we have to let the past go and go forward and go and go forth into it people there's people outside it they're like your relative that are screaming for truth they're screaming for freedom and sovereignty but they don't understand it they don't know and that's what that's why that's why i'm having david to talk about this important the magical thinking it's uh, man i i love your your presentation and i'm gonna let you uh, continue with it uh, 
so good. Awesome, Fred. I'm glad you mentioned the, the gratitude a minute or two ago, because that is so important. Even as we're going through this hard work, it is important to feel gratitude. And I, I will tell you, as I was starting to figure this stuff out, and as I've been able to unpack these changes and, and do the inner work, and I started to see improvements, like I would be able to suddenly sleep well when I had been struggling to sleep well for, for lo longer than I would even want to admit. And uh, I'm very grateful. For example, today I, I got a, a really good night's sleep last night, and my none of my back pain was bothering me at all. I was feeling I've been have been feeling fantastic the whole day, and I think that's a, you know, that's kind of goes back to what some of the, our teachers tell us is when you're doing the right thing, because it's the right thing, then the universe has got your back, and you're going to be taken care of, and it's it's going to clear the way for you to do what's important. So it is really important to feel, I think, you know, not that feelings aren't important. Of course, we want to feel that gratitude and, and really appreciate even, especially the small things because everything is built on those things and the foundation. So I wanted to say that. And then what you were talking about, as far as like caring about more than just me and mine, that's a great segue into this slide because I've talked a little bit about the consequence to me. And of course, through the principle of correspondence, we know that as above, so below, as within, so without. So it makes sense. But now, you know, the, the one of the main reasons or the real reason why we're here, why we're doing this is we care not just about ourselves, not just about putting food on the table, but we actually care about the aggregate of, of the reality. We, we, we start off with that premise that this is not the best that we can do. However, I can tell you 100% that there are consequences to magical, magical thinking has consequences on society and on, on humanity as a whole, to our whole civilization. And those are not great consequences. Those are not going to lead us to where we want to go. They're going to lead us further away from where we want to go. They're going to lead us down the road of, that we're currently going down, which is accelerating, uh, which is basically more and more enslavement, more control. And as long as we keep thinking magically, then uh, that's exactly what's going to happen. So, um, yeah. So this is this is where it ties it all ties together to the great work. And I can tell you that, that the way I see it, again, you can verify for yourself if this is true or not. But the way I see it, this is truth. We have no chance of actually solving this and evolving our consciousness in any significant way, as long as the majority or even a significant minority of humanity engages in magical thinking. That's how important it is that we uproot this, this type of thinking and get and completely replace it with true manifestation that we're going to now talk about. So the dark occultists, our opponent, however you want to call them, these ancient psychologists who understand our, how the human psyche works to a very deep level. They understand how to manipulate it, therefore, and how to manipulate our perceptions. They know this, of course, for them, this is, this is, this is common knowledge. This is common sense for them. And they know that if, if they can get us to keep thinking magically, it's just going to play right into their hands. So that's why I said earlier that I've been in, inadvertently supporting the dark work by thinking magically and they know that and they love it. So just let that hit home for a second, you know, how, how you're actually helping their agenda, their dark agenda when you think magically. So, so human suffering, it's not going to change. It's going to increase. Not Things don't stay the same. We have the principle of rhythm. So things are flow, ebbing and flowing. We have polarities. So it's not, there's, there is no rest state in reality. So suffering is either going to decrease or increase. And I can tell you for a fact that it's going to increase as long as the majority of people continue to engage in this magical thinking. And that's why I feel so strongly. And that's why I'm, putting this together, I wanted to create at least a starting point for us to have this conversation to start to uproot this and, uh, you know, uproot it one mind at a time, you know, as Mark Passier likes to say, freeing humanity one mind at a time. So this is really the work that we're doing here, right? So the dark occultists, I've already mentioned this, they know they, they're going to continue to actively promote this because they know it's just going to play right into their hands. Once you understand that, that understanding alone can help you to start to to really shift your perspective in terms of what's going on. So we're, we're here, Fred, I, I, you know, I'm going to bet my life on it that you and I are here, that we have something in common is that, and probably most of the people, if not everybody who's watching 
is because we want to manifest freedom, freedom with a capital F. We want to live in a free world, not just freedom for Dave, not just freedom for Fred, which isn't, you know, with maybe, maybe with a small F, we could argue that there is such a concept, but we're talking about freedom, meaning the maximum maximization of the expression of free will. So it's something that we can quantify. We have free will, but we, but if, if we don't have the ability to exercise that free will, then we're not truly free, right? So we want to maximize that because that's really, that's, what's going to allow us to evolve ourselves spiritually and in the physical realm raising our consciousness you know experiencing greater lessons lessons that and and challenges that we can't even contemplate now because we're not there yet but they're waiting for us they are waiting for us and and when we're ready they will be there right so that's the unlocking of greater experiences and challenges never going to you know the challenges are never going to stop the whole point of of growth at any level of, of existence is is uh when a plant grows out of the earth it has to push the earth aside i mean there is no growth without some kind of resistance so it's just the challenges and the opportunities will be greater and then of course it's not going to be all doom and gloom i've i've never thought that way it's also going to unlock you know joy peace and purpose to a level that we that we can't you know that we can perhaps contemplate but until we actually experience it it's like wow like that is the real juice that is the real motivator that we can just imagine what we can do as a species as a species as we evolve and even beyond that right is it's some it can be hard to imagine it but it is a worthwhile exercise to imagine so freedom is so important for all of these reasons and then each of us will have our individual reasons contextually about why it's so important So what is the actual formula to manifest these or any conditions into physical reality? Now, I mentioned, if you were paying attention, you remember way in the beginning, I said, the solutions are simple. The truth is often very simple. It's, it's so simple sometimes that when you, you, somebody hits somebody over the head with it, they're like, duh, <laughs> that was so obvious, right? The first part of it, of course, we need to know what it is we want to manifest and why it's so important. And that's why I shared a little bit about why I think that freedom manifesting freedom is primary. Um, and you have to decide for yourself if that's, if you're really in it for that, right? Because each, each of us does have that free will. I can't, no one's going to force you to think that way, but you have to really decide in ultimately, do you want to live in a free world? What is in, what is really important to you? You know, what is it that you actually want to manifest? Right. And then the formula is you've got to get your entire consciousness behind it. And when I say you're in consciousness, I mean your thoughts and your feelings, the things that we've already talked about and your action and your action has got to be behind it, right? The missing piece and not just that it's missing. It has to be in unison thoughts, feelings, action. And it's actually a cycle because as we act, that brings in, that feeds back into our thoughts and into our, and we get a, we have a feeling about the, res, the consequences of our previous actions, which then drives the next action. And when we can apply sustained willpower to continuously act in a certain way, then we're going to actually accelerate that whole process. So we do, so this has been the missing piece. And in this, uh, presentation, I'm, I'm not going to be able to dive in deep enough to this concept because again, this is something that we could spend an entire presentation just going through this and many have, and if you haven't checked out Mark Passio's podcast from number one on, that would be a great place to start because he goes into this in great depth and explains it excellently. But just to give you the cliff notes version today, the action that is in alignment with the thoughts and feelings is the missing piece continuous action, continuous and sustained action towards a specific goal. What is important there is I want to to bring that. Can you uh, well, yeah, bring that uh, the, the little uh, slide there? Um, if you miss one of those, if you miss uh, uh, either thought or emotions, your actions will not be in line with your consciousness you're going to be stuck into this um, 
let's uh, let's say uh, the emotional, the feminine aspect of the brain. Um, if you don't control your emotion, if you're into a, a neurotic state of mind and you're controlled by your, your emotion, your actions will reflect that. You cannot only take decision upon your emotions, upon your response, your emotional response, or only about your intellect, because there's an imbalance there. And the, 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 that's a beautiful image. I like it very much because it's, it's explaining the complexity, complexity and simplicity. I like it very much. So I think, I think, um, the emotional part there, I think it's a big one. And most people are in balance in the two hemispheres, means in the intellectual, logical, and the holistic, emotional, imagination will be in, on, in balance. And the action that coming from that, they're, they're, they're bringing more harm in the non-doing something and in the doing something at the same time because yeah and there can be that's a great point fred and there can be misalignment in terms of no action so we've seen examples of inaction or or not taking action and then not taking action in uh in incongruence or incoherence with the thoughts and feelings so these are two different manifestations and they are both significant um and i can't say if one is more prevalent than the other i just know that they're both different manifestation. Each of them is a different manifestation of being out of unity consciousness. And really, um, again, the, the, the uh, reason why I personally respect and don't poo poo the dark occultists as an opponent is they, they have, they are putting their thoughts, feelings, and actions into alignment towards their goals. Right. So, and they're just probably laughing at how uh, disorganized we are in, in general, because it, because they're able to put it in lockstep towards their dark agenda. So we need, if we want to, if again, going back to the question, if you really want to live in a free world, it's going to take the same level of unity consciousness towards that goal to make it happen. Right. And this is a feedback loop. So again, I I'm going to continue studying this to learn it to a deeper level. I'm sure Fred, you're going to do it as well. And we could all stand to learn more, but if you could at least for now grasp the concept that it's a cycle that there's a feedback loop and that all three aspects, it's, it's very stable. It's that Trinity. It's very stable. And it requires that, that feedback is what allows it to keep building on itself. And that's essentially what we're doing as part of this great work is we're creating that feedback loop in the aggregate, but each of us individually also needs to be doing that as we step up our own actions individually. We're, we're not selling anything. That's the no. thing there. We're not selling a product. We're not selling a, a dogma. We're selling, we're 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 offering people the 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 the, the chance to do something about it, about this condition. And if in, if you don't suffer in your life and everything is fine, then good for you. You don't need it. Yeah. But well, for most people, we are have struggles and. A lot of different ways. Some are uh, family-related issues. Some people have emotional issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is a, a a clear explanation of the um, this trinity of the thought and this the wisdom, because we could change the action for wisdom mm -hmm. in this in this plane. That's right. Because wisdom requires action. Wisdom is action toward, you know, which is in alignment with truth. Exactly. Great. And I, I created a, um, one of the videos that I published recently is actually called Action is Required. And uh, I would love for people to check out, you know, my videos. Uh, as Fred said, we're not selling anything. Everything that we produce is free. Um, and, uh, it, it's a, it's a labor of love. It's, I put it out there. I'm inspired when I create the videos that I do the content, it's, it's all because it all goes back to 
everything we're talking about here is, is what's the ultimate goal? We want to live in a free world. What does it take to live in a free world? We all need to understand the basic tenets that we have free will, but there are consequences. What are the consequences? Well, if you think magically, the consequences are a lot of suffering for everyone. If you don't think magically, if you start to learn how, you know, first principles, then you can start to end that suffering and you can start to move more into a holistic, into holistic balance. But ultimately, uh, when I made that video is because uh, what I could see, and this was, for, again, I was speaking to myself as much as I was speaking to my audience. All my videos, I'm saying, for, I'm first of all speaking to myself and then, and then I'm speaking to everyone else. And um, I was saying, Dave, you've got to take action. You know, you, it's not enough just to think, just to, it's not enough to just take in the knowledge. It's not enough to even have a, an emotional response to the, to the knowledge. Um, you have to actually act, take action. And uh, one person, you know, someone might say, well, what can one person do? Well, one person can do a lot. As we're going to see, there are, there are ways to even amplify the reach of our actions. But every action matters, right? The, every action matters because they all, every action has a consequence. At the, least the, one. The principle of cause and effect. And actually, yeah. we're living in the, the, the realm of the effect. And we should live in the cause. If I understood well. Um, Very true. So I, I think I think that's a, a, I think it's it's food for mine, you know, just for just this sentence by itself, you know. Hundred percent. So how true manifestation works, the formula is that is first we need to understand that we live in a co a reality that we're co-creating together. And it's, it's cause and effect, cause and effect, and we can see it playing out in our individual lives, and that's great, and we need to see how it plays out in our individual lives because that's our realms. But it's also rippling out into the greater reality, and it's adding up, it's summing up. You know, it's not necessarily a mathematical formula that you and I can sit, out, sit down and write out on a piece of paper necessarily, but we can see how it, how it aggregates, and we can see that as more and more people act in a certain way, then the reality starts to shift around that behavior, right? So, and this is why, why when you have the majority of humanity thinking magically, engaging in magical thinking as we've defined it here, then you get a certain outcome, which is more and more slavery, more and more control, more and more suffering, right? Ultimately, that's really what's happening. More and more suffering from being, from basically butting up against the, the, the reality itself instead of harmonizing with it. Right. So we need to really understand that reality is co-created and each of us can take when each of us takes full responsibility, as I think someone from the audience mentioned, um, and we start to contribute through our actions. Every single action that we take really matters and we, we take it consciously and through a conscious choice to act rightly. And then through our words, which is also a form of action, speaking is a form of action, but it has the power of inspiring others to take action as well. And that's the amplifying effect. And that's why, for example, doing this kind of presentation is so important because now every, you know, out of all the people who listen to this either live or, or in the future, maybe even if just one of them gets inspired to go out and do and act differently, then it's a win, right? It's a win. So that's the power of the amp of the voice to amplify and to, and to create reality on an even greater level. Right. So in order to manifest these specific conditions, i.e. freedom or any other condition that we would want to manifest, we must first embody those conditions internally. Right. So we must be internal sovereignty. Yep. We must have the internal. We must be internally in. Exactly. We must have the internal monarchy and, and internal harmony and alignment. And then we're in a position to go out and start to share what we've learned from our new perspective and share those ideas. So, so every time we get on here, when I do this presentation, it's because I understood something that maybe I didn't understand previously. It doesn't mean I have all the answers. It just means I was able to get something that's powerful and based on pr truth and principles. And now I want to share it with more people so that others can benefit from it. So that's an iterative process of keep going back, learning more, learning more, and then teaching it. The teaching part is very important, not just sitting on that knowledge, right? 
we're not dark occultists here. We we want to we want this information to get out to the greatest possible audience. We want to de occult this knowledge. So that part is extremely important. And this is important to give yourself time to yeah. heal and and accept the truth that you're gonna still make mistakes. You're still gonna uh stumble on the rocks on the ground you know you're not gonna you're this is this is not about uh, becoming perfect it's about reducing harm essentially harm to ourselves and harm to the others yeah perfection is that could be a form of magical thinking too because it's a form of paralysis because if you think things have to be perfect you'll never take that action it's actually exactly. a stopper for action so important so the question is how do we truly manifest freedom in the world i think you guys are starting to get it the the rewards of course the rewards and the sacrifice i think this is a great way of looking at it because you're not going to get something for nothing right it's just that's the way the universe works there's always a price to pay but it, it it's worth it right i don't want to get ahead of myself but it's worth it why because what is the reward well, the reward is we may we may exercise our free will, right, at all times and places, right? We also unlock those greater realities and experiences that sometimes are hard to imagine it because of where, where we've been stuck at, but they're there. They're waiting for us. They exist. They can exist, and they do, and they will. Uh, and maybe perhaps on some level they have already existed, and we just, they're just waiting for us to experience them, right? So that's the reward, things that, you know, fantastic paradises that we can't even imagine. What's the sacrifice? What do we have to give up? Well, we don't get to harm ourselves or others. It's really that simple. We don't get to we don't get to beat ourselves up and we don't get to beat other people up. We don't get to uh, take away what we need and we don't get to take away th things from other people and so on and so forth. And we also have to defend ourselves, obviously, because it, for in order for free will to be a thing, that means that the possibility of someone trying to harm us has to be a thing. If it didn't, it wouldn't there would be no context. It wouldn't be meaningless. Right. So we do have to defend ourselves and we also have to be a hundred percent responsible for the consequences, whatever they are. So good, bad, ugly, neutral, semi-neutral, whatever happens, we, we ultimately still need to be always responsible for the consequences of our actions. And then whatever happens, take act, you know, the subsequent way that we behave down the road will be based on us assuming responsibility for what has already occurred. Right? So that's the sacrifice. And I would argue, you know, this is just my, uh, this is not even, you know, necessarily a universal truth. This is just kind of my take on it, is that uh, it's worth it. Okay. So again, maybe this slide is a little bit repetitive for what we've been talking about. Uh, but, you know, the inner work is always the first step. And I think one of the things I like about the LibraCast in particular is, um, there's a lot of focus on the inner work, right? There's a lot of focus on getting your mastering the ego and getting your emotions in check. Um, as opposed to, you know, yes, we need to call out the, the, the dark occultists and say what's actually going on and how many people are dying from the jab and this, that, and the other. It's important to be aware of what's going on in the world, of course, in the world of effects, mm -hmm. but that's not where the real change is going to happen. So one of the things I really like about the Libra cast in general, and, in this work is we are approaching that and we need to continue to do that. So the real work is the inner work. Um, and I, again, what everything I'm saying to you guys, I'm saying to myself. So I, it's a, for me, it's a continuous work as well, aligning our actions in the world with the, with universal principles of truth, with morality, very simple with the consequences, and then continue to share and teach based on what we've already learned up to this point. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, this presentation, maybe it could have been better, but I'm sharing with you the best knowledge and best understanding that I've been able to come up to and the best wisdom applying this in my own life up to this point. And that's enough to keep going, right? Maybe the next time I'll be able to share something even more powerful. doesn't matter. Just get out there and share it because there's, the world there's needs a good, this information. There's a good ex exercise that, you, that people can do that I'm, I'm going to give you people. 
Um, the first thing that I, I want to bring that because Mark Basso keep repeating it. Um, first thing, stop lying to yourself. Yep. The delusional part of yourself that imagine that you're gonna um, you're gonna get better by doing nothing, that your world is gonna get better by doing nothing. And take a good look at yourself in the mirror and stop pointing outward for all your problems, all your little, uh, all your little, um, your little things that bothers you. Stop pointing outwards and point yourself. Look at, take a good look at yourself in the mirror. Because a lot of people have not tamed this ego identification part there's actually people who are identifying themselves in this culture in this society in these subcultures and these religions and these affiliations and these groups and these boy clubs when you put yourself there when you're using ego identification you are keeping yourself from growing up i'm not saying to people to stop doing something out outside this is not what i'm saying i'm saying that you need to do the first thing first and it's cleaning your own temple. I'm repeating it a lot in this podcast. Do the cleaning of your own room, of your own temple first. Because you cannot go. You cannot go into the great work. You cannot go, go uh, teaching people when you don't, you didn't do the work. You, you, I'm, and I'm at the risk of repeating myself. Learning by heart stuff that you heard, it's not inner work. Inner work is taking this knowledge, understanding it, imbuing it, imbuing it in yourself, in your thoughts, and then acting upon it. This is why we're coming back to magical thinking. Even if you're in the great work, if you're in this, the, the spiritual communities, this is your responsibility to, for the betterment of yourself, to take care of yourself and stop this self-loathing, stop this ego identification, these worldview that are poisoning you people are still arguing about about the roads you know oh if you don't have tyranny if we don't have slavery who will build the roads you know it won't be slave masters that's for sure <laughs> i mean i mean your people are scared shitless yeah of 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 the boogeyman of the boogeyman this is how childish people are. They're scared of their own shadow. Carl Jung called it years ago. So this is, this is about growing up. This is about maturing. This is about starting conversation that are awkward, that are uneasying this is the time to start conversation that are start arguments and debates and talk about these things because if we're go you're if we're i i'm you know we're doing the the the, the episode we're doing the podcast because this is what i can do because i'm fucking alone in here i'm fucking alone in in quebec in canada I don't know anyone who are doing the great work. I don't know anyone. Maybe John, John who commented earlier, who, are, who is like 
swimming in this ju just like me who is he's, he's making like great comments thank you john by the way so just imagine this 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 burden that we take on ourselves this sacrifice the time sacrifice this time this time is only it is is your only currency there's nothing else so what are you doing with your time what are you doing with your 80 springs that you're gonna live through well 80 maybe 75 depends if you're a man you're gonna live like you're you're gonna die younger well this is what they're saying but um i think i think this presentation is on point i mean i need i we need to i need to do it in french you know i have to do this take your work if you if you allow me to do it i'm gonna do it in french and Absolutely. i'm gonna fucking is, slap uh... people around this, anybody who wants a copy of the presentation, let me know. I'll, I'll, you know, maybe we can share a link to it somewhere. Um, sure. If you, if you agree with, with sharing, I'm uh, this, this, this is fucking great. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate your work. Thank you very much for your work. It's awesome. I, I, I don't want to cut you anymore. Oh, uh, you're good, Fred. I love it when you get <laughs> fiery and passionate. I, that's one of my favorite parts about the Librecast and your work in general. Is I think um i look up to that I, I often say i've even said in some of my videos like i i feel like i'm not offensive enough like i'm not i feel like i'm i'm not passionate enough myself and i so i really appreciate that and we need to hear more of that and you know that's the voice of truth speaking through you and i love it just you know never hold back in that way that's awesome but yeah, that's the real passion. That's what's really got us motivated here. And I'm almost done here with the presentation. Um, really, it's just, you know, it's just to kind of put that emphasis back on the fact that that we, that in our manifestation is kind of like, you know, prin that principle of correspondence. We're like the small creator with a small C. So we, we're we not God, we're not the creator, but we have a similar, we, we are able to create things, right? So we need to respect the fact that we are, you know, a correspondent reflection of creation and uh, also respect the fact that this manifestation is a skill set, just like any skill set that's going to take a lifetime of mastery. This is by no means something that, oh, great, you know, Dave gave a presentation. Now I've got it. I'll just, you know, homework for one week and I've got it. <laughs> it's like, no, this is you signing up for a lifetime of mastery whatever that is for you whether it's 75 years or 100 years or however much time we've got left it is a lifetime of mastery right and it is absolutely going to be required if we want to unlock that freedom so again go back to that principle you know ask yourself a good question if that's what you really really want because i know that's what fred wants i'm you know i'm don't need to be convinced there i know that's what i want that's what my desire is. And I know that there are others out there in a similar vein, each of them doing the, you know, putting their best efforts out. And I do commend each and every one of them. Like I said in the beginning, I really thank everybody who's doing this work as well. So this is the key, folks. We've got to move past that magical thinking, past that instant gratification if you want to actually get to the gold mind. And I can tell you, from my perspective, worth the effort. You decide if that's the same for you. It's definitely worth it. And uh, it's it, incredible. Um, it, it you you open uh, my eyes on uh, a few things, and uh, I would I want to thank you personally um, for your your beautiful work. Um, but um, I want I want to take the time, and I'm doing it um, every time. But to every great workers to every people who are struggling with spiritualism and and um spiritual uh uh, uh struggles and uh, all these people who are sacrificing their time to to improve and try to to 
spread truth and freedom through words. I want to thank you. I, f I fucking love you guys. I fucking do. And um, it's uh, you, you don't realize it until you're that your two feet on your your two feet on are in it. You know, I I I've been. Um, at the risk of repeating myself again, I've been there for, for a decade now and um, I just started to teach and doing this uh, this podcast and um, I understand I understand the, the, the ramification and the sacrifice that it needs and uh, it's important to express this gratitude because we don't have it mo uh, much from the outside. You know, people people don't like great workers very much. You know, we're not we're not there to come to be put people in in bubbles and and comfort them. Pretty much, we're here to to shake their their uh, shake their heads and shake their their shoulders, and then give them give them this a uh, uh, a metaphoric slap from time to time. Um, but um, I it's it's incredible the growth that you can go through in a, a matter of months or years i mean there's there's a lot of of beautiful positive uh thing that you can get through this and sometimes you you have to the, the sacrifice on not only time but you're gonna uh stumble upon people who will have a um, strong uh, negative emotion, re emotional response to uh, your work, and it doesn't it 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 doesn't worth abandoning because people are attacking you because people are trying to humiliate you. People will come from everywhere. If your work is based on truth. You're gonna have struggles. You're gonna have people who, are, who will come to you and challenge this. Not challenge your belief, challenge the principles that you acquired with the time. Absolutely, Fred. Uh, can I just mention you? You did a recent episode with Maria West, I think it was, and she. Yes. I got to tell you that episode was on fire and she specifically <laughs> lit a fire under my ass. And now I'm, my feeling is like, bring it on, bring on the hate, you know, bring on the confrontation. Um, and I actually took to heart what she said. And now I've made it part of my efforts to actually go out and speak even more broadly. Like I want to get on as many podcasts as possible. I don't do my own podcast, but I want to be a guest on others and I want to be more, I, I want I want to face that confrontation. Whereas I realized when she when she was speaking on that podcast, it was very personal for me because I could tell it's like when somebody says something, it, if you know they're speaking truth to you, it's it goes right to where you need to feel it in your being. And I was like, she's absolutely right. I'm, you know, I'm just creating all this content in a bubble. You know, what did she call it? The um, echo chamber. I was yes. like, no. You need we need to be on the front lines if we have any chance at all of transforming the world you know through through sharing truth and principles we got to be more on the front lines we got to be hearing from more haters not that everybody's going to be a hater but if we're not at least hearing if we're not at least getting into some confrontation then we're not really on the frontier we're just kind of in the yep. comfort zone of speaking to people who maybe already get it and you know speaking to each other about it and that's great there's nothing wrong with that but I, I want to be, uh, I, for myself, and I'm sure this is true for, for everyone, um, we need to be on the frontier, right? Because it is a spiritual battle. And the other guys have an incessant way of getting in front of everybody. And, you know, we need to be in front of more people. So, yeah. So bring on the hate, bring on the confrontation. That's what I wanted to say. And I, I'm really glad you did that episode with Maria. I think it was brilliant. Yeah, shout out to uh, Maria West, by the way. Thank you, sister. Fucking awesome show. Fucking awesome. I had the the more it's going, the more it's. it's I I like this and the discussion table. 
that these are my my i like it very much having stimulating this conversation between even this week on friday by the way i'm gonna uh plug my my uh table discussion with uh these awesome great workers that i'm having and stimulating in this conversation and sharing opinions because because you brought up uh, david the eda co chambers and we had this huge problem in these communities and the spiritual communities and new agers and even great workers and and uh in the spiritual movements there were these people who were creating uh tight circles and then if you challenge them they're gonna uh ostracize you they're gonna they're gonna gatekeep you there yeah. there's gonna be gatekeeping and and um aggressive behaviors and they're gonna attack you with words and there's and it's very um not unusual because we know this is as above so below so below as above so this is the the principle of correspondence and full action when you and natural law we could talk about natural law and all these beautiful uh doctrines that we can learn about uh the uni uh, universal laws and the consequences on behavior of humans and in the uh in the 3d world that we're sharing together um so <clears throat> i want to thank everyone again for being there and um share this this uh, awesome podcast that we just did thank you dave uh for this it's uh i mean we need to share it far and wide so people, 100%. it's 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 free you don't have to do like much you you take you, you take your mouse and you share this stuff everywhere do you have an odyssey page um dave yes i do if you search freedom vibe or i i guess um i'm not sure the best place to put it. i guess we can put it in the comments but i do have an odyssey page if you just go to odyssey and search freedomvibe.art it should come right up so you can this this is another thing that we people can do it's go on odyssey libercast page is there you want to have the the the, the videos you want to download them and upload them you go go spread the word and there's a lot of different great workers we can we could like bring them up but i think i think the the, the thing is we can bring up um the one great work network and um the one uh, one great word.com i i don't want to make a mistake about this um but essentially this is a uh a, a, a place where uh great workers and searchers and podcasters are bringing their stuff all together in this in this place and there's plenty of information there ignorance cannot be justified in this era of the of of the world you know and this era of time it, it ignorance isn't a justification everything is free you can have everything you want about anything so um i want to thank um uh caroline uh for um her uh her generosity and bring um this uh shadow work i mean yeah, i would like to to uh to impress people to go there on the f uh, facebook or on the, the 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 web page that i showed you earlier and go see there the information is it's incredible it's going to help you for self-healing and things like that and and uh, fighting these um these demons and and um taming these demons so um have a good night and just before i go i, I forgot I almost forgot about this this friday there's a table discussion at 9 p.m there's gonna be nate cap is gonna be there derek there's gonna be james there's gonna be leslie it's gonna be it's gonna be fucking awesome so 
tune in on Friday, 9 p.m. on the Libercast. So have a good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great stuff.